Today we're going over Libre Office. Now, anybody that's followed the channel for any period of time knows I haven't exactly been a big fan of Libre Office, and it's just not fair to them because, well, I basically opened it up, looked at it, tried to do a couple things, and then I was just like, ugh, it's not worth it, and I would just close it. Or sometimes I'd just do like a basic text document, and then it would just be for me. But anytime you've used it extensively, its stock features and its stock settings aren't exactly conducive in a world that is, let's be frank here, owned by Microsoft Office. If you're in business or you're sending things or collaborating with someone, they're going to be using Microsoft Office nine times out of 10, or probably 99 times out of 100, I should say. And we need to change some settings in LibreOffice to really make it functional. Also, just for familiarity purposes, I needed to change some of its display settings because its display settings, why aren't necessarily bad, they're just very foreign out of the box when you're coming from Microsoft Office. So with all that, this video, we're taking LibreOffice and we're gonna go ahead, install it, customize it, add some Windows-esque features as far as fonts and other things that people on Windows will need to see your documents. And then also change the actual display properties of LibreOffice to just be a, a bit more familiar for us. So with all that said, that's what this video is about. And we're going to go ahead and jump into the desktop and check this out. Okay, so we're going to start by installing LibreOffice. Uh, I'm going to be using Flatpak, and I like Flatpak the best out of, you know, Snaps, because I've gone over that in, like, my Ubuntu video, and also, I think Flatpak just universally, I enjoy it a little bit better because of the searchability and the install process. It's just, just so darn clean, and that's why I use this method. Now, if you're on, I, on my Debian machine inside, I tried to do APT, install LibreOffice, and I was having some quirky things happen as far as like the launcher getting stuck and some other stuff. And on my Archbase machine, when I directly installed it, I didn't have any issues. So it, mileage will vary, but I wanted to do flat pack install because no matter what Linux distribution you're on, this is going to work and it's probably going to be the most stable as far as all of them because all the dependencies and things that LibreOffice relies on is baked in. So to do this, uh, obviously install Flatpak, you know, whatever package manager, Flatpak install that you need to do. And then we just simply do a Flatpak search LibreOffice. So uh, with this, it searches and it says, hey, LibreOffice, and we look, here's the application ID. And it's from Flathub. So we know, hey, all, all good there. We're going to install this stable branch, which is 6.2 as of this video. So we'll do Flatpak install, Flathub, and then org.libreoffice. It says, do you want to install it? We say yes. Do you want to change the default system installation? Yes. This will go out, install everything, and then we'll be able to use LibreOffice. Uh, again, there's so much stuff that goes with LibreOffice. That's why I really like using this method uh, because of all those dependencies that LibreOffice has are baked in. Now, the only time I would suggest not doing this is if you're very uh, space, space conscious because how flat packs, snaps, and, and the like, and app images all work, it, it does take up more space on your drive. However, uh, again, this is not that much. It uh, ends up being maybe 500, about half a gig. So uh, in my opinion, I think you should always use Flatpak. Okay, with Flatpak installed, we're going to go ahead and close out of our terminal here. And if you don't want to use terminal, you can use just Flathub and install it through your graphic user interface as well. I just like uh, terminal for simplicity stake. And with this, we'll go ahead and hit our start menu. And under Office, we have all our LibreOffice now on here. Now we're gonna just go LibreOffice and launch into this screen. A couple things I like to do right out of the gate is go Tools, Options, go down to Advanced, and then Enable Experimental Features. Uh, this kind of gives us a lot of customizability when it comes to the look and feel of LibreOffice. Hit Apply and Restart now. This restarts LibreOffice. So now that this is done, let's go ahead and launch into Writer. Now this is the default screen of LibreOffice Writer. Uh, I don't particularly like this. There's a couple bad things out of the gate I wanna talk about. One, 
the libra liberation serif font by default most windows users won't have this so if you send them a document with this font they're going to go hey this just looks like a bunch of chinese or you know just it's going to be foreign characters for them so uh this isn't a good font to start out with uh also the actual look and feel is a little bit different if you don't mind this look and feel it's actually a pretty good layout However, uh, I'd like a little more of the office style look and feel. So we're going to change that up. Just go view, user interfaces. And I like to use uh, contextual groups. And this kind of gives it more of that office look and feel. Now you can take this a step further and do like some, some bit of theming here as well. To do more of a theme or a color scheme, let's say, uh, I want a, like a little more of a dark theme here. We can go tools and come down to options. And from options, we can go to personalization and then we can just do a, a pre-installed theme. So let's say I wanted just a little bit darker on the back. We're gonna go ahead and just do that. Gives it a little bit of a stylized, darker tone to it. So I, I kind of like doing this as well. Now there's a couple other things we need to do as far as getting the fonts and everything working in LibreOffice. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of LibreWriter and we're going to launch back into terminal and kind of install a few things here to make it look really good. So the first thing we're going to do is get a lot of the Microsoft fonts. That's like your Arial, Times New Roman, these types of things that most Office documents have. Um, so we're going to go, yay. Uh, actually this is going to be yay for me, but uh, for you if you're on a Debian, Ubuntu, what have you, it's going to be sudo apt install and then it'll be ttf ms core fonts dash installer. Go ahead and type our password and if it can't find this uh, on Debian, you'll find that package. However, so actually on, on Arch, it's a little different because we got to get the AUR for this one. Uh, it's going to be yay dash s ttf dash ms dash fonts. Go ahead and install these fonts. Now, this doesn't grab every font as we see here, yeah, like Comic Sans, Arial, Impact, Times New Roman, Tribeca, uh, Webdings, which who uses Webdings, and that's just part of the MS fonts package. There's another font we need that a lot of documents have, and that is the Calibre font. It is probably the most used font out of the Microsoft fonts package. So let's go ahead and install that, and also Tahoma as well. So this is actually TTF Vista fonts. Now I'm on Arch, so I can do it this way. However, if you're not on Arch, um, what I'd recommend you do is I'm going to leave a link for the, the Vista fonts for, for Debian based systems in the description as well. Uh, definitely use that. All right, so we'll go ahead and exit this installer. So we have all our Microsoft fonts. Let's launch back into our, our Libre Writer and see what it looks like. So now we can go up to our font selection. Uh, let's see if we have Calibre installed. We should. You see Comic Sans is there. And there's Calibre. So uh, by default, I like to default all my documents to Calibre just for maximum compatibility. So to do this, we're going to go into options and change our default options. So to do this, we're in uh, tools options. Go down to Libre Office Writer, basic fonts, Western. If you're in the Western part of the world, however, if you're in the Asian part of the world, definitely you can come down here and change that as well. But since we're in Western, we're going to go ahead and change these default fonts from Liberation to Calibre. So with that, uh, again, just to show that tools, options, and then just basic fonts. So everything's set as uh, by default Calibre. And now whenever we open up a document, it'll default to that. So if we just go office, writer, and this is going to help you out a lot. Um, there's one more setting we need to do. By default, it opens and saves in an actual uh, open source font, which is great. However, like I said, most of the world runs on Microsoft, therefore you need to be saving in like docx, which would be a default setting. So let's go ahead and change that default setting, going back to tools options. We go to load and save, general, and this is where you got, like the ODF format is what it defaults to. However, we want to always save as, and then come down to docx. This is the most standardized version, which you have any for be using Microsoft Word from 2007 to 2019 is going to be saving in the docx by default. 
and that's what we want to save in. So now when we go to save this document, let's just write something and hit save. Uh, you'll notice um, we'll go to Untitled 1, sure. We'll save it. We'll close this document and then go to our file manager and just kind of see what this looks like. And there you have, you have your docx, you could easily take this, send it to anybody out there, they're gonna be able to pop it right up in their Microsoft Office with no problems whatsoever because they have a standardized font and it's also saving in docx. So these are like the big gripes, many Windows users or Microsoft Office users coming over into Libre, Writer at least, have uh, out of the gate. Now, these are just the settings for document writing. As far as Excel, this uses Calc. Uh, I find a lot of that, I, I'm still kind of going back to Excel for, especially since I use a lot of VB scripts and things of that nature. But as far as the writer goes, this pretty much takes care of probably about 99% of all my issues. And if you do a lot of documents, you're probably going to want to do this just for sanity's sake. So there you go. That is LibreOffice. Hopefully this helps you use it a lot more. It definitely has helped me because I was finding that a lot of times I was just not utilizing it just because I didn't know it or it wasn't uh, very familiar to me. And that's not a fair judgment on LibreOffice. It's just a lot different from Microsoft Office out of the box. But with these settings, you'll be able to send documents with others using Microsoft Office. And honestly, they're not even going to know you're using LibreOffice, which is kind of the point of all this. One, you save a ton of money by using LibreOffice. And two, it's open source. It's not going to constantly update on you. Anybody that's done Office 365 for any period of time gets tired of it randomly doing feature updates and crap to where it makes you unproductive. Where LibreOffice, hey, it runs on Linux and it updates whenever you decide. So that's pretty awesome. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.